question. When we hosted the IGC, the second one in, in Canada, Twitter and Google and Facebook all acknowledged that they undertake algorithmic impact assessments, but they balked at the idea of public disclosure. And when I turn to the DSA, this notion of systemic risk and how we, how we ask these companies to disclose systemic risks and to address systemic risks, is, it's limited to, as you say, not only illegal content, it's limited to negative, particular negative effects on particular fundamental freedoms and then intentional manipulation of their service. But my reading of that means it wouldn't necessarily get at, when, when you talk about the mental health challenges and, of addiction, we're not, we're not dealing with that. We're, we're not dealing with any number of things that might well be on that nutrition label and not to be on that nutrition label. And so, uh, to what extent should the systemic risk assessment be limited? And would you add delineating factors to the list that the DSA has? I think that there is a real need. So part of, the, part of the challenge here is that the things that we're worried about are going to change every year, right? Because these technologies are evolving. Even the advent, advent of meta, like metaverse, shows you how we need to be thinking about how things will evolve in the future. I think really involving, allowing companies to disclose what they view as, as, as risks, combined with, actually out of, out of Singapore, one of my favorite misinformation researchers, she's an anthropologist, she's not a data scientist. And she has amazing insights on how the platforms are abused. And the way she does it is she sits down with teenagers, she sits down with individuals, she says, show me your phone, explain to me what you see. And she discovers crazy things that we would never have discovered at Facebook. And so having a process where you, by mandate, you have to involve communities, diverse stakeholders to feed in, you, unless you do that, you will miss critical problems. And over and over again, I expect those things to be things that are harmful, that are potentially killing people, but they are not illegal. And so I strongly encourage, at least in the risk assessments, at a minimum, the inclusion of those harms, because if you mandate platforms to articulate how they'll make progress on it, and, and independent rulers, like aggregate data, that would show you, are they making progress? I think it'll be like the trans fats on the dietary label, that they will be more creative and take more risks and, and, and push the envelope because they'll know that people are watching. And the last question, as we move from transparency to a greater sense of responsibility, because again, when I ask the companies, are you responsible for the content you promote? They, they all said yes. But what does that responsibility mean? I mean, you've, you've blown the whistle, we've had the Cambridge Analytica scandal, and Mark Zuckerberg continues to rake in billions of dollars. And to what extent, trans how far does transparency take us? Because as, at some point, do you, do you have a sense of what additional measures would be brought to bear as it relates to responsibility and actual accountability beyond just the label? So I think a really important distinction is part of why they hide all these things from us is that we could get angry at them, right? Once you force a nutritional label and you force them to be accurate on it, I guarantee you people will protest. I guarantee you people will push for um, boycotts and advertising. The, the biggest reason why St Stop Hate for Profit failed last year was Facebook just lied. They came out and said, we've done all these things to stop hate. And they glossed over the fact of how bad the problem was or how little they were actually doing or how few languages they were supporting. Like, if you can't have a hate speech classifier in Hindi, are you, what are you doing? Um, and so I think there's a real thing of we should not undervalue the value of protest and the value of public pressure. Um, because right now, Facebook has kept any of that from growing. The second question on responsibility. I strongly advocate that when a change goes out to billions of people, any change, because as we've seen before, there's some of these changes that they didn't anticipate were going to have huge impacts on misinfo. Um, uh, that someone's name needs to be on every change because Facebook shouldn't be able to show up anymore in front of Congress and say, we don't know who's responsible. A committee made the decision. Or, you know, um, I heard that when Cambridge Analytica happened, someone asked Cheryl, like, so who's getting fired? Like, this seems like the ball was dropped in a very gross way. And she said, we're one team, we stand together. And the thing is, when you have that kind of mentality, there is an incentive to go with the flow because you will be penalized for speaking up, but there is no penalty for not speaking up. And when you start having to put people's names on things, I think people will, will be like, eh, maybe I want to ask a few more questions first. And I think that's really important.